Let's talk about style tokens in Figma. I won't be diving deep into grids, typography, colors, or effects, but I am going to explain style tokens, how to make them, use them, publish them, and maintain them. As usual, all the relevant links and timestamps stand below. So let's get into it. At a very high level, Figma styles allow us to work more efficiently with less bugs and inconsistencies across our both design and development environments. It is always a good idea to collaborate within your design and development team in order to come up with naming conventions, different styles and consistencies across your systems. By the end of this video, you're going to learn how to create grid styles, effect styles, color styles, and text styles. And basically we're gonna go through and create this grid system for mobile and desktop. We're gonna create all of these different text styles that you see over here, which we have a heading, body, subtitle. In our example over here, we're then gonna approach the same thing with colors, where we're gonna create a palette of primary and neutral, and we're gonna create this drop shadow style for both a high and a low shadow. Cool, let's get started. All right, let's start with the grids. In a nutshell, grids are simply guides that help us to design. We'll do a longer video explaining them, but just bear in mind that grids can only be applied to frames in Figma. So for example, if I was to select a shape over here, I don't have a grid option, but if I go to my frame over here, you can see that I have my layout grids right there. And in this example, we're gonna go and create a grid for a desktop and a mobile. And I've, I've already created both of these over here. So my desktop frame has a total width of 1920 and my mobile frame has a total width of 390. And I'm not really going to explain the entire idea behind why we're going with these numbers. I'm just gonna show you guys how to create your own style tokens that are grids. So. All you gotta do is to select the frame that you wanna create the grids on, go to layout grid and press on this plus button. And immediately you see that we've got these grid grids. So these are just a bunch of square grids that go across each other horizontally and vertically. This one in particular, has a size of eight pixels. It means that each of these squares are eight pixels in height and width. So if we were to increase this or decrease this, that size would change. So we're gonna keep this because we do want an eight pixel grid across our entire layout grid. But I also want to add a column grid. So what I would do is to press the plus again to add another grid on top of this grid. And this time click over here to open up my options, select the drop down, and you can see that we've got both columns and rows. I'm gonna go with columns. My grid count is the, let me just zoom out so you could see better. Grid count is a number of these columns that I have. So I want a 12 grid system like this. At the moment, you can see that it's stretched across. I want it to be right in the center like that. The width of my grid, I want it to be at 120. And the gutter of my grid, I want it to be at 24. So the gutter is the space between each of my actual grids. I don't need an offset over here. And that just basically controls the color of my grid, which I don't really mind to leave it as red as it is. Once I'm done with this, I close it and I have my grid. I could technically go through and do the exact same thing for all of these individually, but an easier way is to just come over here and create a style. I would simply click on the style button over here and click on the create style. And I'm going to name this. This is gonna be my layout grid and the forward slash basically places it in a folder like structure. So I'm basically saying create a folder called layout and inside of that, create a grid style of large. And you'll see why this is useful in just a second. So then I select create grid and then I can come over here. If I was to go to my layout grid, you could see my grids already there for me to use. Let's go down here and do the same thing for the mobile. On mobile, I want a very similar thing. So I'm gonna create a grid grid and a column grid. I want the column count to be at six this time. I wanna leave this as stretch because I don't really care about the width over here. I want the width to be auto, but then the gutter, I want the distance between my gutters to be at 10 pixels and I want the margin to be at 20 pixels. So that means that I've got a 20 pixels on the outside and take 10 pixels between each of my columns. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm gonna come over here, press on create style and just type in layout forward slash small. And since I've done this, if I click out of everything, all of my styles 
appear on the right hand side over here. This is basically every single style that exists within your Figma file. And layout is the folder that I created to place all of these grids within. And if I go there, that's where both of my grids are at the moment. And this is how I could basically come over here and modify them if I needed to. So I could click over here on edit style. I could rename it. I could add a description to it. I could add more properties to it. I could come over here and change the behavior of this. So let's just say that I want like a 16 column instead of 12 I could do that I could change the width I could change the gutter or anything else that I wanted to do if I wanted to delete any of these guys I could simply right click and just go delete style or simply just click over here and just press delete on my keyboard and that's basically grids for you so let's move on to typography. So the basis of creating styles is very much the same. What you would do is to basically create your typography however that you want. In my case, I have a heading one, which is the font enter. It's at extra bold in font weight, font size of 56 pixels, line height of 64 pixels, and the rest are pretty much left as is. So once I'm ready and once I'm happy with this, I'm basically going to do the same thing as I did with my grids. I'm going to select the actual text that I want to convert into a text style. I'm going to come over here into styles, create a new style. I'm going to call this one heading forward slash one. And same thing over here. I'm going to call this one heading forward slash two. And under my text styles, I now have both the headings. And for this one, I'm going to call this one body forward slash one, body forward slash two, and I'm going to call this one subtitle forward slash one. And exactly like my headings and my layout styles, I now have body and subtitle added to here. If I wanted to modify these, I could to however that I like to modify them to. And the cool thing about this is I could just type whatever over here and when I'm ready to select a specific style for this I could just simply come over here and do that and you could imagine if I had three of these heading ones for example somewhere and I wanted to make a change to this heading one I would very simply just go to my heading one and let's just say that I wanted the size to be at 72 and I wanted the line height to be at 80. That's quite easy to do because I have access to the properties over here and I'll just override that. Next, let's talk about colors. Again, it's a very similar format. Once you're ready with your colors, select the color that you have, go to where the color is at, click on create style. It's going to call this one primary forward slash red. And I'm just going to come over here and call this one neutral forward slash 1000 neutral forward slash 900, neutral forward slash 800, 700, 600, and 500. And this is a very common practice in order to name your colors based on their intensity of their shade. And that way you have 10 different choices or you could go up or down by 100 or however that you want to work through your naming convention for your project. It basically follows the exact same rules. So if I wanted to change this to be an orange later on, I could very easily and that would take place within my entire project. And the very last thing, let's talk about effects. It's very similar, so I'm only going to showcase the drop shadow. So let's just say that I've added the effect. I've got my drop shadow. I've set it to the properties that I want for that drop shadow, which in my case is four blur, four Y value, and then 15% of opacity on the color. And once I'm ready with this, I simply just go over here. I'm going to call this one elevated low. I'm going to copy elevated. And I'm going to call this one elevated high. And now I could very simply apply these to my items. Let's talk about the UI elements. You already know how to apply these guys. So if I wanted to, for example, add a color, colors can apply to almost anything like frames, shape, stroke, and more. So in my case, if I was to add a frame over here, I could add a fill to this 
and all of my colors are available to that frame. Same thing with my shape. All of my colors are available to my shape. If I want to have a stroke, I'm going to make this a little bit lighter, add a stroke, make the stroke four and add that color. So you can see I can add color to almost anything. We've already learned about typography. So if I was to type in hello, I could basically swap around all the different types that I've got just like that. And I could choose a color based on the color palette that I've just created. As a matter of fact, we could do this to these guys. Go right. So now we could see this has a topography of heading one and a color of neutral 1000. Some of these will allow you to view them in both a list view like this or a grid view like this. So that depends on your preference. You could use a search box to search for something. So if I was just to search for 500, you could see the color 500 comes up. I could just do primary and all my primary colors would come up and the same thing with neutral, right? And as we talked about before, if you have nothing selected, you can see all of your different styles on the right hand side UI and you can basically manage them from here. So you could move them up and down, you could delete them, you can modify them, rename them or anything like that. In order to edit something, you would go to the thing that you want to edit, click on the edit button, the edit box comes up and you make your changes over here. In order to delete something, you could right click and delete. You could even add a folder like this and place elements inside that folder if you wanted to. Renaming is quite easy as well. You can either just double click on something, click on edit and rename it this way or right click and edit. Same thing. One more thing that I want to show you. So let's say that when I go over here, you could see my primary is at the top, but my neutral is at the bottom. If you wanted the neutral go to the top, you could very simply go over here and drag it to the top. Just like that, if I go back here, my neutrals are at the top now and my primary is at the bottom. And you could even do this a little bit more micro. So you could just go into neutral and bring 500 to be the first if you wanted to do that. And if I go over here, 500 is now the first color style that I have. The very last thing that I want to talk about is publishing. In order to publish your items across your projects so that this will be available in all of your files. So like, let's just say that if I had another file over here and I wanted to use the exact same styles within this file, I would just go to my tokens. I have all of them ready to go. I would just go to assets, go to team library, and this is the current file. You can see I could just publish everything. I would just click on publish. It's going to show me this checkbox of all the different items that I'm publishing. Um, if I don't want to publish any, I could just uncheck them and I could write a description over here for management. So I could just type in new styles added, for example, and then I could just click on publish styles. It says publish in library at the bottom over here and successfully published. So if I come back to my other Figma file, because I've published them to my team, I could just come down to assets, open this up. I just want to say that yes, allow the style tokens to be accessible within this file. You can even showcase all the different elements that I'm bringing in. And I'm going to close that. And now I have everything available to me, right? So if I was to type over here, hello world, I could come over here and you can see all of these are available to me. So I can just add this header in there. I could add this color in there. I could even add a different effect. So like a high shadow or a low shadow in there. It's a little bit subtle, but it gets added in there if I wanted it to. And this will now get implemented across. And I just wanted to show you something quick. So if I was to come over here and let's say we want to change this 500 at some point. So I would go and find it under neutrals 500 and let's change this to a blue color. For whatever reason, we want 500 to be blue in the future. Once I do that, you could see the dot that appears on top of assets that basically indicates that I have new items to publish. I will click over here, publish one change. It'll tell me exactly what that change is. Changed neutral 500 publish the style. Once it's successfully published, I could go back to my other files and it's going to ask me to review the component updates. Once I review it, the changes gets implemented on all of my files automatically. So you can see the power of 
Figma style tokens, once you implement them, especially across bigger teams or especially across bigger projects. All right, that's it. All right, that's it for the Figma style tokens. We're gonna grab this knowledge and expand it with the knowledge that we learned from other layouts. And we're going to implement both of these into components in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Please like and subscribe in order to support the channel. And if you're feeling very generous, please share it with others that you think might find this helpful as well. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below and I try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching this and I'll see you in the next one.